for live, I'm just going to check on my Facebook page. Uh, here we are, Wild with Wool. I gotta go to Facebook. And I think we're live now, so there will be people coming along. I'm just going to see, and I'm going to give you a nice little lesson because I know everybody's home and everybody's stressed. We're still working, but we've got our staff down. There's four or five of us in here, um, and Lauren is in the basement. Um, we are still working here quietly, uh, but we're social distancing. So Angela will be, uh, when she comes in to give you a close-up, I'm going to be stepping back. All right? That sound good, Ange? That sounds good. Are we live now on here? I don't know. We should be. Are we live? What? I, I, yeah, I think we are, but we are sideways. So oh. I think we might, we, Do we are like sideways. This? Do we have to go like this or? Sorry, you guys. There's 14 people watching, so that's good. That's better. Might have to stop. Okay, let me see here. <laughs> oh, oh, you're turning. Oh. Go. Are we good? I guess. I don't know. I don't know if you can't do live the other way. This is just go there. upside down. All oh, together. we're turning. I'm not even turning. Well, this is like a delayed a couple of minutes. Sorry, you guys. It's Sorry. Take us a few minutes to get this straight. We don't know what we're doing, <laughs> but we know how to hook. We're really good at that. <laughs> all right. Um, not right yet. Okay, so we're still. Now we're right side up. Good. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh, we got 39 or 40 people going to take the lesson. Oh, it's fun. I'm not, thank you for making me happy. <laughs> it's nice to be happy. It's nice to feel happy. We're all so stressed. So, um, oh, I can barely hear you. You can barely hear me. What? Why? Why can't you barely hear me? I'm yelling. <laughs> Maybe she has to turn up her volume. Maybe you have to turn up the volume on your computer. Figured it out and found you. Okay. Can barely hear you. Allison, maybe you need to turn up the volume on your computer. Are other people doing that too? Sometimes there's a mute. It's a little. Okay, I'm gonna see. Uh, is it still going? We have 61 mm -hmm. people here with us. Okay, are you still going? Because it looks mm -hmm. like it stopped over here. Um, refresh my page. Okay. I hope it's working. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yep. Yep, still going. Okay. All right. So, can you just show them this, Angela? I'll step away so that you have you can come in and do a close up of what we're doing. Um, so, we're because Angela and I need to follow all the rules from Health Canada and all they're suggesting. We're just step. I'm stepping back and I'm letting you. I'm letting her show you what we're doing. So. I've got these. You may want to come around and do it right side up for them, Angela. So I have these poppies here, and I'm going to show you how to hook them. What I'm doing here is a field rug, and it's got some poppies in it. Now, I started this rug yesterday. I'm not crazy about the dark green against the red. So that may come out as time goes on. Like right now, it's just looking a little too, like, Remembrance Day for me. The colors are not, you know, I, I love Remembrance Day, but that's not what I'm trying to do in this rug. So I'm going to um, add some other colors in here and show you how to how to get that. So Angela, I'm going back here. So when you're hooking a poppy, um, I'm first going to use a piece of this red cloth that I have. Here we go, and it's all. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna fold it in four. And I love this, I I got this from Nola Hybrider and she dyed it for me and I just thought it's beautiful cloth. Okay. So I'm gonna cut myself six strips of that and I'm going to cut them about a quarter of an inch wide. Okay. So let's go over here in the corner. So I'm going to the edge of the poppy and you'll see that I'm not actually following the lines on my canvas. Can everybody hear? I can see the comments working perfectly here in the UK. Ingrid here, Krista Taylor's there. 
Fredericton is here. Oh, thanks everybody. Great. Okay. Just checking, making sure you're all there. Okay. We have over a hundred people here now. That's wonderful. And we'll record this. So I'm not, now you would think that what I'm going to do right now is go all the way around and it is your natural inclination to go all the way around that poppy. Stop it. Stop it. Don't do it. Just come back and go down and up and go up and meet the center of that poppy. So you have this weird shape. Look at it, you got a line down and a thick line here and then you've got another one up there. Okay. Then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go all the way around the center. Well, not all the way around, just to the edge right here, all the way around that part of the center. So I've got two pieces of cloth that I've used there. Now I've got this orangey red, this gorgeous orangey red, um, and I am going to double that up. This was hand dyed here in our studio, and I'm gonna dig in. Just putting a little bit of that orangey red, I'm gonna go around the corner here. So there's no saying I don't have time to hook anymore, is there? Because we've all, we're have all we all spending a lot of time in our homes right now. And I said to my husband last night, one of the beautiful things about what is happening is that none of us are alone. It's happening all over the world and we're all together in this. And that is, for me, even though, you know, I feel very cautious and apprehensive like many of you do, but that to me is that in that we are all experiencing this together. To me, that's like we're all praying together in a way. And I think that's a really good thing. So I, I know that I am not alone, you know, and, and you're not alone either. And Angela, you're not alone. We're all in it together and we're all working together to make the very best of it. And there are going to be very few times in our lives where we have this time to spend at home to really to focus on things that are important to us. So um, I'm gonna really try and and uh, spend some time on some things that, you know, I might not have had time for, like my create, well, uh, my creative pursuits with my website that I haven't, like I've never actually done this before. This to me is a really, a positive learning experience. You're watching me hook because what I've done now is I brought in this kind of merino stream and I want to show you something about this poppy. I'll get back to the other stuff later because we don't want to focus too much on that. But I brought in this merino stream. So what you're going to see here is I have three different textures. I have the cloth, I have that sort of orangey poppy, and then I have this kind of thick merino stream and I'm just going to finish up that poppy with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my center. So I pulled this bag of dirt right here out of one of those containers over there. And they're kind of purpley black and pinky. And uh, we have 147 people watching us, Angela. Isn't that wonderful? I'm it so is. glad you're here with us. And they're everywhere. Such UK, notice, Texas, everywhere. Fredericton. Oh. Welcome. Halifax. Welcome to my studio. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I've got this beautiful yarn that came here and it was kind of a gray beige and we over dyed it and Logan almost dyed it a black. It's gorgeous. I'm going to take that and do my center with it. And it's got a little bit of white in it that shows up. But I'm, going to, I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. Okay. And I'm going to clip off that bit of white. Now I'm going to take this blue black plaid and it's a cloth that I that I hung up and see how that has a sheen now you could just fill it in but I find to make a rug interesting you need a lot of different wools that's why I'm always encouraging people to build their stash it's a very 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 important part of hooking good rugs so we have a couple questions Deanne let's sorry look at that. do we have questions yeah we have oh, a lady that oh, wants to order fun. A kit and wants to know if we cut the wool. Uh, yeah, we cut all our, uh, when you go on our website and look at our kits, all our wool is cut into strips except for one kit, I think, which is the Santa Claus and the snowman or something like that. But generally, yeah, they're all kit and they're all 
They're all lovely. So that's a nice little poppy. Now let's do another poppy, okay? Because the key is now is not to do every poppy the same way. That's very important. I, I see it all the time in people, they say, mm, my rug just looks a little stiff or a little flat. Well, that's why, because you did, you got, got something nice going there and then you did it again and again and again. And you know how I know that? Because I do it in painting all the time. I get something really good in one corner and then I do it over the whole thing and I lose the energy of that corner, right? And it all looks the same. So what I'm gonna suggest over here is, okay, we've got, I'm gonna do a poppy that's kind of flattened out because these are kind of gonna be bending in the wind. So this one here, I've got a sort of a dark red yarn in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, a little bit of kind of orangey fleece here and I'm gonna pull it off. And see when I do the fleece, I just pull it off really thinly. Like that. We also had a question about your hook, Deanne. My hook? Yeah. Oh, this is like an old hook. We, ours, this is just, I just like basically what, if I was gonna choose a hook from the studio, I really want to sell you the $49.95 hook because <laughs> it's my nature, right? If you want it, get it. I buy the, I, I just go with like the $12 little hook because I like the hook on it. It's a great little hook for me and it's the one we put in all our kits. So that's, that's the hook that I like. This one is the one that I learned on um, and I still have it. So, um, so I see um, when I took that apart, when you're using fleece, a lot of people go like this and they're using a big honky honky piece of fleece I would take that you want it filmy and thin so you want it and then even pull it a little bit and it'll go thinner okay so I'm putting that underneath now I'm going to take that and I'm just going to go underneath here I'm just pulling back so Angela can get in close and it's just a little bit of that okay Got 175 people watching us. Isn't that just wonderful? Awesome. So now I've got another yarn and I'm folding it. And it is basically a sport weight or a worsted weight, like sort of, it'd be like Cascade 220, except for we've dyed it ourselves. So I'm gonna pull that up and I'm gonna go over and just watch me go outside the lines because if you have a pattern, oh, the beauty of it is that you don't have to follow it, right? <laughs> That's you know, a pattern is great for getting going. So we want every poppy here to be a little bit different. So yeah, nobody's alone. We're all in it together. Tomorrow night, we did practice today at lunch, but we didn't have, we didn't have any wine with it. I just want to tell you what we're doing. Myself, my, my friends call me and um, she, she did it on Messenger and she did like a group chat. And we're gonna have, tomorrow night, we're having a little happy hour and we're gonna do it all on Messenger. So we're all gonna sit there at seven o'clock with our glass of wine, and we're gonna have a little happy hour, and I don't know, I'll probably be hooking or whatever as we do it. So, so I thought that was nice. So now see, there's a line here on this one, but I'm not gonna do it because I got this looking so good. So why would I go fill that in over there? I don't have to, it's my choice. But look at that little poppy. And see, it has a little bit of pink in it, okay. So now, well, before we started, I pulled out this little hot pink streak because it does not belong, right? This does not belong with all these red poppies. So that's why we're gonna put it in there because sometimes things that don't belong really end up fitting in really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another one of these partial poppies, I'm gonna go, um, over here to kind of a round one. So in this one, you'll see I've got that dark red Briggs and Little, which is a Briggs and Little that we're using all the time. I've got a little bit of uh, orangey red recycled wool. And now I'm gonna take this pink, this hot, hot pink. And when I put this hot, hot pink in here, it sure looks different in there next to that red than it does right here in my hand. See that? right here in my hand like that. But when I put it in that poppy, it gives it a little spark. It says, hey, I'm here and I'm fuchsia. Isn't that great? You know what, no wonder I love hook and rugs. Like, listen to this, it's just so happy. Okay, I found this scrap of red cloth. I'm gonna wrap that in around here 
and this is a big raggy strip. I use a lot of different textures and I'm not, I, but I always, the materials I always use, the materials I always use are uh, wool or silk or linen or something like that. Okay, and I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go in towards the center with the rest of this. I cut it and started again. And I'm gonna go over here. Sorry, Deanne, I have a question from yeah, a new hooker. that's great, a new hooker. All right, hello, this what's up? Says, uh, is, this is Lorraine, yeah. and it says, I see you don't leave the beginning up or the end of a strip, but cut it from the top. I don't leave it up. Well, do you wanna know a little secret what I do sometimes, Lorraine? I don't know if I can explain this here, but so I'm going to, uh, just before I answer that question, I'm going to do, I'm, I put the red cloth and I've got that little bit of paint. Now I'm going back to that red merino that I like so much. And now this is pretty much done so I can fill in the whole thing with red merino. So now it's just hooking. So I'm going to show you that little, see, all your ends come to the surface like this and you clip them off for sure. I don't leave any ends on the back, but sometimes I do this little sneaky thing. And when I go to hook, I bring up a loop. And then underneath, I have the end left underneath, and I kind of tuck it in to the next loop, right? And that just, I don't know, it just saves a bit of clipping, I guess. And it's just something that I like to do. And it wasn't even anything anybody ever taught me. It's just something that started to happen while I was hooking. Okay, so there we go. Now, do I want to, I want to come down here with that? And there's another nice poppy. We've got two nice ones now. We've got three nice ones. But you know what I really like? I really like what happened when I added this pink in here. And not the hot pink. I do like that. That's just going to be a little bit of... But I really like this sort of ready pink. So I just got to go back to my frame and see if I got some more of that. Oh, and oh, oh, okay. I pulled out this too. It's kind of an orangey pink. Pink, you know, have you guys noticed that fuchsia and... and uh, kind of coral are really good together. All right, we've got 192 people with us, Angela. Okay, so that's our poppies. We've got three poppies. I'm gonna go back to the centers and I'm gonna take, fill in those centers. So that was three little poppies. Now I wanna show you a little bit about filling in around them, okay? And how we're gonna change this from this dark green. Because why did I put in this dark green if I didn't really like that combination? Well, the reason why I put it in is because I want to see, um, I want these, I want to have like the feeling of stems. And I want to see the stems kind of stick out. So this is just a nice dark heather purple. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of that in this center here. This is going to be a nice rug. I wasn't so sure about it when I was making it. Sorry, Deanne, we have a question from yep. Shannon. Shannon? Shannon. She sure, wanted Shannon. to know um, when you added the pink, did you, was there a space or did you squeeze it into the red? There was a little space, Shannon. Good, good question. Thank you. Just keep asking questions, you guys. I like, I like it when you ask questions because it gives me something to yammer on about as I'm looking. Usually I just yammer in my head. So look at this. I've got sort of a really dark green tealy effect along with the little purple. Um, and so this is this yarn here and this yarn here. And that's what I used for this center. So I used something different than that center. Now, I'll probably go back and go back to that, uh, this black wool and just use that for this center. So we've done three different centers and three different poppies. I'm gonna go almost all with this one. And then I'm going to take the dark purple. So, but each one of them are different, right? If you have three yarns, that gives you more than more than three combinations, right? I'm not sure how many because I was never that great at that. <laughs> you know, it gives you quite a few. Now, see that? So they all have nice centers. Okay. Now, what I need to find for you is I need some good greens. So I always uh, use, I always try to pick out like out of my messes, cause I have a lot of little messes in my rug hooking. You know, these, these bits and greens. I'm gonna put those away now. I'm gonna tie this back up in a knot. Leave my reds over here. Do we sell pencil roving? Uh, yeah, we, well we sell, um, I don't have any pencil roving in right now. I've got tons of roving, which you just pull apart and make into pencil roving. 
Okay. So I've brought over my greens. All right. Might gather a few more as time goes on. So you'll see that I have, so I was fooling around here and I just like to mess with things. So you'll see that the, the leaves that I've made here are kind of triangular shape because I wanted these poppies to be, I didn't want them to be kind of traditional, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another poppy. Oh, here. sorry, Deanne. Yeah. I missed the beginning. Did you start with outlining the centers, and were they in black yarn or wool? Sorry, uh, they were Lori in, Ann. They were in black yarn. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I no, wanted to catch that's okay. that before. No, that's great. It's good. Um, all right. So we're just going to be a, another few minutes, and I'm just going to show you about how to how to wiggle through some greens here and make it interesting so I've left that triangle uh, sort of and some of them are diamond shapes and those are my leaves so I wanted these poppies to be a little uh, I don't I wouldn't say modern but maybe just a little I kind of want them to be a little stylized so I've got this woody moss which is part of our Sunday drive palette which I know a lot of you have ordered it's a uh, our, from our Briggs and Little collection. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just, I've got to fill in one more poppy here. I'm just going to help myself a little bit so that I have an area. Otherwise, I'm going to cut off that. I'm going to hook this poppy really fast. Very tempting to fill in the whole thing. You don't, just because you have a full strip of yarn doesn't mean you have to use it. Always clip and start again. I'm going to take... Um, a little bit of this ready pink, put that in there. Remember, every one different than the last one, that's what you want. You can have one yarn that's kind of your go-to yarn, which for me in this one is this red merino that I love. Merino wool is so soft. Not, not so great for rugs that you're putting on the floor because it is soft. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's clean off our palette here. I'll sweep this up after. What do we got going here? All right, so now I would want to be going in a different direction. So I'm going to work in this little area right here. Um, there's going to be some sky over here, I think. So I'm going to start with um, this green yarn, and it's almost like a crocheted yarn and our woody moss. I'm going to put those in. So. Sorry, Deanne. Yeah. Patricia would like to know, how do you decide where to use yarn versus wool? Um, it's really a lot of, well, it's a lot of time it's kind of an intuitive decision. I like cloth, and so it's about choosing which texture I want in, in which place. So, like down here, right here, where you see all of this Briggs and Little, um, but over here I used cloth, and, and I, I just wanted to, I, I just keep liking to mix it up a bit. So if there's yarn right here, then I might choose a bit of cloth just to have a different texture. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to you, Angela? It does, yeah. Does it answer it? Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in little areas with these, with these greens, okay? So remember the flowers are coming, you, you're kind of it's it's a garden and it's wild so it, you don't have to bring this green all the way down and through here but you could bring a little bit of it if you want it and that will give you a little sense of perspective i'm not too you too concerned about perspective what in this rug so i'm going to use it here this woody moss and i'm going to go over here and you can see that when i do this i'm reshaping the flowers again Sorry, Deanne. Connie yeah. wants to know if this yeah. is going to be a wall hanging or an actual rug. This will actually be a wall hanging for sure. So I took the woody moss and I went down here. I went kind of around part of, of each of these and then I brought it down. But you see the shape of it? If you looked at the shape of it, it'd be like almost like a giraffe or something. It's not a, it's not a predictable shape. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my woody moss. I'm cutting another piece. And I'm going down here and and this is Briggs and Little against Briggs and Little. All right, I'm happy because we hit 200 watching this. I'm a numbers girl, sorry, it's so silly. <laughs> but it makes me happy that 
I get a chance to share this with you. Okay, so I put that in three places. So let's put it, I think we need a bit more of it. I'm gonna go down here and put it down at the bottom. One thing I don't know how to answer you right now is what I should do with those leaves or even if they're gonna work out. See, I need some cloth for this. I'm gonna go over there and get some cloth. You can show them my little stash, Angela. It's not like they're here, they can't reach in it. Yeah, but, but this is my little stash. Oh, I got some jersey, that's good. And I got some fleece. Ingrid wants to know what cut. Hi, Ingrid. Um, what cut? Uh, well, I hand cut them. It's a six. Usually, it's a six. Six cut. or an eight, usually. But I did hand cut these, so they'd be they'd be more like an eight. Um, okay. And I do got some cloth here. And I've got some cloth here. All right. Okay. So this is a nice piece of wool cloth that Logan dyed, and I have a nice big cutter out there that I use a lot of the time. But I'm just, for the sake of this video, we're just going to hand cut today. Lynn, she does that to me all the time. I come in and she's hooking and she's looking at me having a conversation. And it always amazes me every time. They're commenting about how you can hook while you're looking away. I can hook with my eyes. That was Lynn Strom. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. How are you? How are things in Alberta? Okay. All right. All right. I'll just do this for fun, but I'll hook with my eyes closed. You can hook with your eyes closed because you know what hooking is? Hooking is about feeling, right? Hooking is about letting go and not watching every step, okay? So just watch. Don't think I'm not paying attention, because I am. My thumb is coming up against another piece right there, so I've got to turn around and go back up. But you can pay attention in a lot of different ways. Isn't this fun? Okay, Dan, Heather wants me to actually come behind you. Yeah. Is okay. that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to pull the frame out so you have room because we have to be really conscious of our social distancing. It's really important. I'm really, really proud to live in Canada and look at how our government and all those, all those health officials, I'm just like, I'm just so uh, happy with the way they're handling things. You good there? I think so. There we go. Lynn's doing well. Good, Lynn. I'm glad. Oh, she loves her. Um, she's liking her yarn stash builder. Oh, good. They're nice. They're nice packages. I put like, I put like ten of them together yesterday, and it was so much fun. Thinking, oh, I can't wait. And I had to squash them into bags because we were really working on getting them out. So if you've ordered one, it's on its way. All right. So here's my jersey. So now it's time for a little light. So you know, once you've used dark for a while in a background like this, it's time to go light. We still okay? We're not, they don't cut you off at a certain time. So now I'm just gonna fill in with the light over here. And I will post this rug when it's completed. We're not gonna be able to complete the whole thing, obviously. Hey, Briggs and Little are watching. Oh, welcome. They've just dyed us a new palette. Thank you, Mike, and all you guys. I know you're still making yarn up there, and we got our new light blue today. Or actually, I think it came yesterday. Okay, so now we've got light and we've got dark, and now we want something strong and beautiful. So, like, that to me is strong and beautiful. Okay, so let's go in here. I'm going to get you to go back around the front, Angela, if you don't mind. Can you? Sure. Can you, are you okay? Yeah. I'm yes, okay. Krista, we do have mixed bags of Jersey. If you want to check on the website. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. All right. And then I'm just going to keep adding these colors, these greens like this. And I'm probably going to use eight or 10 greens in the background of this. But I just want to show you one more thing before we wrap up. In this background, now, it's really easy just to use greens, but if you wanted to, you could like pick some stuff off of the floor like I did with this those pieces just a few minutes ago. Honest to goodness, I did because I was making up super stashes, and these were on the floor, basically. Sorry, Deanna, I've got some questions going yeah. through. Um, 
The jersey, is it wool, and can you put it in a floor mat? Oh, yeah, jersey's wool. It's like 98% or 95% or something wool. It's like for long underwear. That's why we call it sexy jersey, because it's like what you use to make long underwear. And Donna Mulholland wants to know oh, hi, if Donna. the light blue is like the Nova Sky. Uh, well, it changes every time, Donna. We don't really have a recipe for our jersey, but there's. I think we could find you a bag that's kind of like that. Oh, that no, this is it. This that. is sorry. This is different. Oh, this is a different question. Oh, so she wanted to know if it was like the same clothes as um, the Nova Sky, the the light blue jersey. No, the light, the new light blue that you dyed for your palette. Um, it's the old. It's the old pa It's from the old palette. So I think that is Nova Sky, isn't it? Yeah, it is Nova Sky. I think that is, yeah, it's that really light blue that we used to have before. And then we ordered a nice, I think, I can't even remember, Briggs and Little knows better, but I think I, I think we ordered a, a light yellow too. I can't remember, <laughs> sorry. All right. Sorry, I got a, uh, sorry, one more question yeah. from Patricia. Can we request color groups in a stash builder? Yeah, people did yesterday. And you know, that someone said, I don't like, I don't, I didn't want any teal or dark purple. So we did our best, you know. And someone said we want it neutral, so I put a few neutrals in there. Um, okay, so pick this up off the floor, right? All that little, all those little bits, don't waste them. They're good, you know? Okay, so I was making up super stash builders. That's what I was doing back here this morning. Now, it's really important, instead of just going with greens here, that you play and put a little little bits and pieces because that is kind of gives it an energy um, that you won't get with just greens so I'm just taking these pieces and I'm filling it in and that's going to make that rug way more beautiful than it would have been I, I can just guarantee you that and I'm, so I'm just moving these colors around and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and fill in all of the other colors. So, people are still watching, but I think I think we've taken up enough of your time, eh? I think we've we it's about as much as you can learn in one day. So, I'm going to be going to go back. And so, just go practice this on your frames. I'm going to be going back and putting more greens in around what I just did. And those will end up looking like maybe other flowers or stems or bits of this and that. And the one thing to remember is, is that just because you use, like, don't say, I've got five strips. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I'm going to use this, then I'm going to use this, then I'm going to use this. You're not trying to create a pattern. You're just trying to create um, a feeling, right? And so remember what I said about feeling. It's just like, close your eyes and feel the wool going through. Okay. All right. Thanks. It was really fun to be with you. And remember, we're all in this together. Everybody's experiencing the same things. And, uh, and uh, God willing, everything's going to go good. And we're going to have a beautiful summer. And we'll be together then too, but in a different way. So I'll see you here in the studio. One more question. One more question. Sure. Sorry. From Catherine. While using so many colors, what's the secret to making the flowers stand out from the background? Well, contrast is the secret to that. So if I was trying to do a pale yellow flower here, it would be harder uh, with these colors. Uh, I could probably, you need contrast. So um, if you would, you want your flower colors to be really strong, as, so that's how you want to, that's how it will make it stand out. Any more questions? They want to see a close up, so I may yeah. actually. Yeah, I'll move out of the way, it. and we'll let you do a close up. And I think it's it's a much prettier rug than since you since you guys came along. And these just show them this side, and then that side, and how how those greens start to recede. So that's it, you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being with me. Somebody wants to see the back of your work. Yeah, do you want to get under there and okay. show it to them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, we could flip it a little. That was all right. I can get there. under. There we go. That's like asking to see the oh. bottom of the china cup. Is there a string hanging down there? There's one, but my phone's doing... Oh, there we go. We can S fix it. Sorry about that rotating. So there's a few little holes.
Okay. All right. So as we're going through this together, um, we're still open. We're still working. Um, I was talking to a friend from Italy and they're still working in Italy too. So as long as we're all well, and as long as the staff want to come in and when they don't want to come in, uh, I'll just try and do your orders as best I can. And if they don't want to come in, I'm assuming they will, but there's no pressure. Everybody should do what they need to do. And, and we're all aware of that and comfortable with that. So, um, is, you know, we're, we're planning on working for the next little while, eh, Angela? We're, yeah, absolutely. Think, you know, and if, if, uh, if she decides to stay home or Logan decides to stay home, we're all good with that too. So we're, uh, um, uh, work away, try and fill your orders. So go ahead and order from us. We appreciate it. It's keeping us going. We're still paying everybody and everything's all right here, hey? Eh? It is. We're just work to home, home to work. That's it. See ya.